So I'm here with Paul of Felix and Paul Production Company Studio. It's just Felix and Paul. It's Felix and Paul Studios, so I guess studio. Cool, cool. <laughs> so you have a VR film that's shown here, and it's all about NASA. Tell me what inspired this, what got you involved in it? Yeah, so uh, the project is called Space Explorers, and it's uh, actually a documentary series in VR. Uh, we're showing episode one here at Sundance, and it's uh, the first episode is really about astronaut training, uh, and so we have Sunita Williams here with us. Um, she's actually from episode two, but <laughs> I was going to say I was about to be like I don't think I saw her in yeah. there, but I didn't want to say anything. I was like they all just kind of blur together astronauts. Yeah, yeah they're all the same. When they're wearing that outfit, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Um, so the piece is 18 minutes. Um, what what made you decide on that duration versus like something shorter, or even longer? I know like Will I Am has like a 90 minute movie or something that's in VR shown. Hmm. What duration do you think is right for VR right now? Well, you know, we kind of let the content dictate the length. You know, we've done a lot of projects. Um, you know, we did a, a 40 minute scripted uh, comedy that we actually premiered here last year mm -hmm. called The UB. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. Yeah, so uh, we've done, you know, experiences. You know, length has has gotten longer with time. Our very first piece, uh, Strangers with Magic Pots, was about five minutes. Uh, and then we moved on to, you know, closer to 10, 15, 20. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any real time that is good for VR. Yeah. You know, it's just about the content. And as, you know, we learn to, you know, as, as we, we, we learn to, or as we develop the cinematic language of virtual reality, you know, it's easier to make pieces that are longer and, and, and you know, it's all about telling a story. And since the vocabulary to do that is new in this medium, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're figuring it out. And the longer the piece is going to be, the more master, you know, the more you need to have mastered that, like that language, the medium, cinematic yeah. medium. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask a question. It's not really my question, but I've heard it said online about you guys. Transitions mm -hmm. and cutting. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of doing jump cuts in 360, just because in vlog format you're trying to fit like, you know, 28 shots in four minutes, and it's just like crazy. Mm -hmm. I understand that you guys for a long time didn't like doing straight cuts. Yeah. Can you talk to me on that? Sure. I mean, you know, uh, cuts are a cinematic principle, and um, you know when we started. Um, working in virtual reality, it really was, you know, we, we really wanted it to be a blank slate. Yeah. Was like, this is so different than, who knows if cuts are actually a thing in this medium, you yeah. know? Uh, not, it's not because they're in film that they, they automatically need to be in VR. And in fact, the very first t test we did of cutting kind of broke what we loved about VR, which was this feeling of actually being somewhere. You, cutting is not something that happens in real life. Yeah. And so, it actually took us a long time to find ways to cut that we thought uh, worked for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're actually showing another piece here uh, called Isla Dogs in, uh, oh, yeah. behind the scenes mm -hmm. in virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just straight cutting. Yeah, yeah, time and lapses so, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and that, it works there. And that, that's oh, one of the yeah. first times we actually do it. Cool. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's really just part of our evolution as filmmakers and, and what we think works as, uh, you know, a cut that doesn't break the immersion. Very cool. Yeah. What's next on the horizon? Uh, well, quite literally, there's episode two uh, of yeah. uh, Space Explorers that we're finishing right now, uh, and that will be prim priming in the next couple of months. Um, it's it's hard to answer that question a lot yeah, because everything is wrapped up. I, in, I asked yeah. Kevin Smith yesterday about VR, and he's yeah. like, I really shouldn't be saying this, but we're doing a Jane Silent Bob VR experience. Ooh, that's... Like, uh, one last question. I understand a lot of your pieces are shown in a VR headset. Um, my previous film that I did, the feature, is all about cell phone radiation and long-term health effects. Would you ever consider showing your work uh, projected in sort of like a planetarium setting, and that way you can get more asses and seats as well? That's a tough one, uh, because I think the piece would have to be made for the dome. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, when, when you're wearing a, a headset, you are the only person, you're at the center it's of like the piece. It's like muscle memory, yeah. Yeah, and, and the, you've got the perspective, you've got the scale, um, so it's, you know, it, it, it'd have to be very different. It'd have yeah. to be a very different piece. And, it, and um, you know, I think maybe wider shots would work better because yeah. yeah. totally. they would feel more environmental. But again, it, it, it probably close-ups would work as well. But it'd be a very different thing. You totally, know? yeah. yeah. You, you don't want people to be like, full, oh, turn it around and see someone talking. Be more voiceover and probably time lapses and visuals. But exactly. Something to consider in the future. Yeah, um, well, we thought about it for, for different projects. And, and, you know, working with NASA, of course, we thought of, you know, maybe making some kind of 
kind of dome uh, yeah. experience. Um, but uh, we haven't done that yet. I've seen yeah. it done pretty successfully in, in cases, and even with like a pro single projector, like this company Brumex in Spain, is one that projects on the ceiling, the floors, and the wall. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really look warped. So something to consider. Yeah, well, if you're projection I'm like, mapping on a sphere, then you're in, yeah. in the center and you're wearing stereoscopic glasses, it could look just like VR. But oh. then you're like, well, why isn't it just VR? Well, here's another thing to consider. When you're seeing something that's comedic and you're in an audience full of people, mm -hmm. the incentive is more to laugh when a joke happens yeah. versus if you're on your own, you're like, should I be laughing right now? Like, yeah. you, I, I almost feel like I've never laughed at a VR piece when I'm in a headset. Mm -hmm. But when I watch a 360 video with friends and we're like moving with the mouse together, it becomes this whole other like funny experience. Well, when we showed Miyubi last year uh, here at Sundance, we actually did a sync screening ah. with, I think it was 40 people at once. Wow. And we actually, we usually use like the Bose noise canceling headphones. And put it through and, and no, in this case, we, we actually didn't use noise canceling. Simply, ah. so you could still, you know, you, you, you don't you don't completely distracted yeah. by all the little noises, but you can hear other people laughing, and everyone is synchronized. So we kind of got some of that group uh, momentum going uh, yeah. in that sense. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention I was with Kodak for CES this past year. Mm -hmm. They have an amazing 8K camera oh, that's nice. coming. It's about the size of a hockey puck. It's crazy. Yeah, cool. Does it do stereo? It doesn't do stereo, okay. but they do have a solution for stereo. That's also something I'm looking to. So we now need to check the YouTube if you need right, it. Well, it's great to meet you, Paul. You. I'm looking forward to the Q&A. I'll probably film a little bit of that too.